Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, July 30th, 2021. Uh, today we'll look at stocks which have set new records. The large caps have set new records, small caps are still dragging. We'll see if this actually means anything. Uh, you can see today's presentation is going to be relatively short because I'm traveling. So uh, dollar has pulled back sharply, but I think it's still in an uptrend and we'll examine gold and junior gold miners uh, to see if uh, they are about to turn around into the bull market. So we'll see if that does happen. Bitcoin gained over 40% in 10 days. Uh, let's see if this is enough to turn this into a bull market as well. And uh, for my subscribers, there's going to be two separate video newsletters. One is for elite newsletter, uh, where we look at large cap stocks, uh, you know, at, uh, various commodities, uh, forex, and uh, the speculator newsletter. We look at various speculative stocks, uh, more like breakout stocks. So stocks that are breaking out into a new uptrend and we like to buy those uh, early so if you're interested sign up at masterchartstrading.com all right looking at s p 500 this is s p 500 on a daily time frame i pretty much exclusively trade on daily time frame although yes you can use my indicators you know this green blue red and yellow line for which you can find out more information in the description of the video. Um, I, I prefer to trade on daily charts. The reason being is humans are kind of, you know, we have this diurnal uh, rhythms. You know, we like to sleep at night and we like to be awake during the day. And we also like to do other things uh, instead of staring at the screen. So yes, for example, we can change this to, I don't know, four hour charts and um, it's actually quite nice if you like to trade it on uh, hourly charts. So yes, you, you can kind of clearly see this, this dip um, from 19th in, you know, 19th of July. And you notice where it bottomed, it bottomed exactly at the indicator line. So this indicator lines, they, um, you can think about this moving pivots. Uh, if you are familiar with pivot points, then uh, that's one of the ways to look at the stock market and in general the way the securities move so my indicators take advantage of that and uh, you know basically that's all i do is i look at the uh, the way they they move <clears throat> so for s p 500 we are seeing new records here's new records on 26th of july uh, 27th of july i'm not sure if it was set let me see if it was set on uh so 20, actually even on the 29th of July. So a new record yesterday, day before. So overall, nothing has really changed. Uh, we were long from April of last year. You can see a breakout uh, in April of last year. Uh, last possible opportunity was in June of last year, 2020. And since then, really, there was no good opportunity, in my opinion, to get in. So basically, this is hold. We're holding this position. And uh, it could continue for a long time. We don't really know where the top is going to be. Um, you know, uh, I'm having sometimes conversations with uh, my clients and some, you know, like to analyze more of a fundamental picture. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, anybody, any, it's anybody's guess how high this stock market will go. Uh, what if right now they will approve um, this uh, uh, infrastructure package, but then they will approve another one? Um, and uh, what if the spending will be, I don't know, $20 trillion? Uh, does that mean the stock market will collapse because the dollar will collapse? Uh, will the dollar even collapse? Um, there are many, many questions, and especially in this post-pandemic environment, um, it's <laughs> things are different, basically. That's what I'm trying to explain. So I wouldn't really worry about those fundamental things. Uh, I would just look at the chart, and the chart is clear right now that we should be holding our long position. 
and I prefer to trail at the blue support resistance. So currently I would have my stop at 3963 for the position that we entered uh, back in April of 2020. Very similar picture to NASDAQ QQQ. So again, correlations are huge. This is correlation coefficient. Uh, NASDAQ correlates very highly with S&P 500. Uh, does that mean that NASDAQ uh, underperforms or outperforms? It, it actually doesn't, doesn't mean that. It just means that the S&P and NASDAQ kind of tend to move together in the same direction. Generally speaking, NASDAQ outperforms S&P meaning that if we entered our position back in April of 2020, we would have been, uh, we would be up by 77% now. But if we entered our position for S&P 500 back in April of 2020, we would be up only 49%. So yes, NASDAQ outperforms the S&P 500. Um, and right now it's the same basic thing. If we entered it back uh, in April, we were trailing at the blue support resistance line. And uh, it, you can see it has not been yet hit since then, April of last year. Will it happen? It's possible. I mean, we don't know when it's going to happen. Again, what if, what if there is more trillions of dollars approved? And this right now, NASDAQ is 364. This is NASDAQ QQQ. Uh, ETF, it's right now at 364, what if it goes to, I don't know, 700, what if it doubles, and then it pulls back, you see, so we don't know that, we don't know any of that stuff, we just look at the chart, the chart says hold, we're holding and trailing higher, that's all there is to it. Small caps are, generally speaking, again, have high correlation, so this is IWM Russell 2000, Small caps, um, similar picture, the, they were underperforming a little bit, so there was opportunity to enter back in May, June, and even as early as September of last year. But that was pretty much it. And again, we were trailing at the blue support resistance line. Um, now, uh, you can see the small caps have not yet made a new record. The last record they made was in March of this year. So you can also see the correlations are negative uh, were negative for a little while here uh, from june into july um, this is a divergence um, so divergence meaning that whereas large caps are making new records so this nasdaq is making just new records uh, small caps have not made a new record so yes this is a divergence does it mean anything um some people assign meaning to it. Um, you know, it, it's possible that it means something. For me, it just means that we can have an opportunity to buy. Uh, so if it pulls back even a little bit more towards the strong support, so for IWM, small caps, it's small, uh, strong support is basically at 200, right there where I'm hovering. And um, at that point, if it kind of bottoms there, so what, I want, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for something of this nature. So what we had here in September, we had a pullback, a touch of the blue support resistance, and a close above it. So this is all I need. This is my signal. Now, I, you know, I, I, in September of last year, I don't remember what happened. Um, you know, there is no events on this chart. There is no earnings because this is an ETF. So there isn't much to go around. You know, to go on, and uh, this is technical trading. This is purely technical trading. We don't really worry about. Uh, things like fundamental or economic events or actions by the Federal Reserve, etc. So we just look at the chart and the chart will tell you exactly what to do. Back in September, it was clear we, we had a pullback and we were bottoming at the support resistance, blue support resistance line, and this is where we buy. If this happens again, we will do the same thing. Okay, so yes, they are the levels are elevated but like I keep saying we don't know where the top is so what if the top is you know 200 percent from today's levels what if it triples from here and then it pulls back you see so we can't know future the future we can't know the future we must act on today's information and today's information is clearly bullish we want to be buying this security 
on a pullback with only buying it up here. If it drops towards 199, which is not that far off, so from today's levels it's like 10%. If it drops around 10%, bottom's there. We need to see a bottom. So a bottom looks kind of like this. It stops dropping and closes above this blue line. You see? Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Just ask um, in the comments or send me a message. I can be reached also uh, if you send me a message here on TradingView uh, or you can send me a message on my website. All right, looking at dollar index, so DXY, uh, dollar index broke out. I think it broke out. It seems to have broken out uh, here on 13th of July. Although the last week's action is not terribly encouraging for the dollar bulls. So it's it's possible that we'll have a whipsaw, what's called a whipsaw, so a false breakout. Now, quite often false breakouts are followed by a strong move in the opposite direction. So if we see a, you know, right now I'm thinking still in an uptrend. I'm still th thinking that dollars in an uptrend. Um, now, if it closes below this la red line, 91.28, where I'm hovering, then most likely we're seeing a whipsaw to the upside and a true uh, movement to the downside. So in that case, we can see a significant move lower for the dollar. And I'm not, a, you know, I'm not married to up or down. It's traders have, good traders have what's called a, strong appeal opinions weakly held so i have that exactly I, I i really don't care you know if it's up or down i just want to trade it so for now what i'm seeing is i saw weak resistance overcome here back on 16th of june i saw strong resistance overcome here on the 18th of june and i saw a bullish breakout on the 13th of july this is all i'm seeing right now However, if it closes below this red line at 91.228, then I will say that that opinion is no longer valid. All right, so strong opinions, weakly held. I have no problem letting go of my opinion. Some people say, but you're flip-flopping. But I'm not a politician and I'm not a military guy. You know, I'm, I'm just trading this thing. This is just numbers and colored things on the screen, you see. Uh, Ego really has very little room in the trading universe. So if you have a big ego, then you probably shouldn't be trading. Now, since dollar, uh, generally speaking, seems to be in an uptrend right now, my opinion or that gold is in a downtrend. So again, XAU divided by USD. So if the dollar getting this currency pair US dollar is getting stronger, bigger, and it will pull this currency pair lower. Looking at this chart, however, um, it's not as clear cut. So right this instant, I think that gold is in a bear market. Why? Because it started, it closed below this red support resistance on, 8th of, on the 8th of March 2021 this year, where I'm hovering. There was not really a follow through. Ideally, we should see significantly new lows, you know, new lows, new lows, new lows. But it didn't really happen. In fact, it was a huge rally uh, into May uh, and then another kind of drop lower. But again, there was not really a strong follow through. Now, what worries me as a gold bear right this instant is that you can see that the indicators kind of curved down. And now we're seeing this uh, close above this red support resistance. So let's project the indicators into the future using the 6.0 version where I'm hovering. Uh, again, you can have the same indicators on your chart. Just sign up. So looking into the future, bullish levels for gold actually not that far off. You see? They are only a meager 2 two percent away you see how close they are so i am very much uh, you know allowing for the possibility that i am wrong on the dollar and uh, like i just said dollar will turn around and continue lower here you see 
Now, if that happens, then gold, you see this US dollar will get smaller. So that means gold will get stronger. And like I said, the breakout levels for, for gold is really close. It's only 2% away. If that happens, again, I have, I'll have no problem buying gold. Um, there are plenty of opportunities, plenty of oversold uh, stocks. So let's look at some of those. And here's gold miners, uh, junior gold miners. Now, junior gold miners actually did, um, would have done better, or rather did better um, in the sense of uh, the breakdown. So the breakdown for gold miners occurred right there on the 27th of April. Uh, but ideally, you should have shorted it on the 16th of June. And you actually would have been pretty successful. That's 15% gain. So, um, you know, this trade, I didn't send this alert. I'm just, I just put this purple arrow. Purple arrows are just, you know, I, I'm showing this as a educational purposes. But uh, if you shorted this, and if you, had, if you had my indicators, you shorted it right there on 16th of June, you would have made money. Uh, and you know, right now we're basically waiting to see which way gold will go. So if gold uh, will go higher, gold miners will absolutely follow it higher. Uh, dollar, we're watching dollar. If dollar continues lower, then gold will gain in strength. So plenty of oversold uh, uh, or other, you know, just uh, gold miners that are, you know, either in a downtrend or are about to uh, reverse. So if gold reverses to the upside, absolutely, we will have plenty of opportunities to buy gold miners. And there are hundreds, oh, dozens of them that we are looking at. But right as of this instant, I still think that gold is in a downtrend. So I will treat it as such. Um, if it breaks out into bullish levels, again, I'll have no problem buying them. So remember, strong opinions, weakly held. And wrapping things up with Bitcoin, so you can see on this chart how wrong I was. <laughs> I shorted Bitcoin on 13th of July. As always, I, you know, I control my risk, so don't forget to control your risk. Uh, I shorted it right there on, on the 13th of July at 3100. It's currently at 4100. So you see, I was really wrong. Um, but here, and also here on the, you know, if you bought it here on 20th of July, then you would have had 44% gain. Notice where my stop is. So my stop is at 4,600, oh, just above this blue line. So if I'm wrong, I will cover my short and say, okay, I was wrong. I will move on, move on with my life. Uh, th this loss, if it comes to be would be a small percentage of my account. It's not like I bet my entire account on this Bitcoin thing. Absolutely not. No, I have risk control. So I bet, uh, you know, I place normal size bets like a, usually I go somewhere between one and three to maybe four or five percent of my account. But usually it's closer to like one to two percent of my account per transaction. So in this case, if I was, let's say my account is one hundred thousand dollars. I would have said, okay, I'll probably, okay, losing, I don't know, $2,000 on this, you see? Or maybe $1,000, just depending on how risk averse or how risk tolerant you are. So looking at this chart, uh, there is still a strong possibility that this whole gain of 40% will get wiped out in a day or so. I mean, look at the size of these candles, for example, this candle on 19th of May. Sometimes they move that much in a day. That's 30% move, you see. So we'll see. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, looking at the four hour chart. So this is a four hour chart. You can see clearly you can trade it very well. There's the uh, breakdown uh, below the red support resistance line. And now we see a breakout. So there's a breakout right there on 25th of July. Uh, you can potentially buy it on another break, you know, on a touch of the blue line. So again, you can trade Bitcoin on any time frame. What's nice about uh, cryptos is that they are traded 24 hours a day. So if you're obsessed about this and you have no, nothing to do during the weekend, 
you know, it's on Saturday night at three in the morning, then you can be awake and looking at the screen. Um, and fortunately or unfortunately, you can't do it for stacks. So, um, if you basically this is it, I'm just waiting for either get stopped out or there could be a reversal or other continuation to the downside for Bitcoin. So, overall, uh, not much uh, we can do at this point. We just we're just watching. All right, so head over to masterchartstrading.com. One word, masterchartstrading.com. Click on products. So I have three different levels of subscriptions. One is just trading indicators. These lines on the chart, green, blue, red, and yellow line. They help you basically visualize price action and they help you visualize where do you want to be buying, where do you want to be selling, at what price level, you see. Uh, I also have the indicators and newsletters and newsletters. I have two newsletters. One is elite, one is speculator. Uh, and I, I'm showing, you know, there are some sample newsletters if you're interested. Uh, so the speculator newsletter is more of breakout type of stocks. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, let me give you an example. So I just had a trade that I closed for this stock guest lock partners i'm gonna zoom in so this is a tr breakout type of trade uh, breakout meaning that uh, you can see this stock was in a downtrend was 52 week lows and then right there where i'm hovering i'm gonna zoom in right there uh 23rd of june it broke out into an uptrend so we actually i actually went ahead and i bought calls um right there on um 25th of June. So calls means I'm buying, uh, I'm expressing my bullish sentiment. And you can see they went from $1.40 to 245 So overall, had a very nice run, 65% gain average because I sold in uh, three increments. So this is a breakout type of trade, one of my favorite actually patterns. So this is a stock speculator newsletter. It's included in the uh, indicators and newsletters subscription in the elite newsletter we trade various um larger cap stocks so for example here's costco costco uh, was there was an alert uh, right there on 29th of march and now it's up uh, let me see close to over 21 percent so this is a just kind of like a pullback type of trade you can see the stock was already above the blue support resistance did something or rather and then finally closed above it again uh, back here on 29th of march and then we just bought it there so we're sitting in the position trailing at the blue support resistance line now if you're a heavy trader and you want your own stock screener so we can find stocks like this for example stocks that are breaking out we can use our stock screener to search for those stocks and you can screen all kinds of interesting um, lists that we provide so you can see there's tons of lists my favorite is this one all stocks with options and then that contains 30 uh, 3900 3, stocks and daily i get this report which contains 138 stocks so what i do is i usually kind of just look through them and screen them out and then send it uh, just the best ones in my opinion what would be the best ones for the subscribers uh, additionally, we now have a MetaTrader 5.0 indicator. So these indicators are now available for MetaTrader. And this is a big achievement, I think. It's available for MetaTrader 5. If you're interested, sign up on their website. And the link is available right there. Okay, that's it for this week's recap. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Have another great trading week. Bye-bye.